Good morning, everybody! This is the TSMU fan here, and I'm here to talk about Thomas. But today, we're going to change things up and not talk about official Thomas content. We're instead going to talk about fan-made content today. Today, we'll be covering a very specific fan-made production that took the fandom by storm when it was first uploaded. And that is Project Tiger Moth, or otherwise known as the good old days. So what is Project Tiger Moth? Project Tiger Moth is the pilot for a series of fan-made Thomas episodes filmed in the style of the fifth season of the show, with accurate replica Gage 1 models of Thomas and his friends, making it the first Thomas project using Gage 1 models on such a scale in nearly 15 years. In this video, I'll go over everything about this production, how they made it, my thoughts on it, and why I think it's the best thing to come out of the Thomas fandom. So without further ado, let's get into it, and see just how Project Tiger Moth was made. So firstly, I can't talk about Project Tiger Moth without of course mentioning Season 5. Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends' fifth season started production in 1997, with filming lasting from September 1st, 1997 to April 30th, 1998. Many fans consider Season 5 to be one of the best seasons of the show, with it boasting numerous darker plot lines and also including much more intense action and crashes. One reason for this change was producer Britt Allcroft's desire to create a theatrical Thomas the Tank Engine film and she requested that director David Mitten test and refine his modeling skills to accommodate higher budgeted action and atmosphere. Season 5 first started airing in September 1998 in the UK and September 1999 on Storytime with Thomas in the US. It had 26 episodes narrated by Michael Angelus in the UK and Alec Baldwin in the US. After the fifth season's end, Thomas would continue to be filmed with live action Gage 1 models on sets until 2009 with the release of the movie Hero of the Rails. The the first all CGI production of the show. Since it switched to CGI, Thomas has never returned to the original model style, which of course has inspired many fans to create their own fan-made model productions. One fan, however, would go as far to recreate the style of the fifth season with extreme accuracy, and that fan goes by the name of Jacob Jarrett, or more commonly known by his online name. Flying Pringle. Under his lead, a group of Thomas fans united to produce a brand new episode filmed with Gage 1 model replicas, aiming to tell a story in the style of the fifth season of the original series. Being a pilot, the team affectionately called it Project Tiger Moth, named after the biplane character by the same name from the series. The pilot was made out of pocket by the team and they stated that no money or profit is to be made from it, even dedicating the project to the late David Mitten, who of course was the director of the first seven seasons of Thomas and Friends at the end following the credits. Jacob served as the director and the senior model maker among many other roles, with even the story of the episode being written by himself. The engine replicas themselves and their faces were made by himself and fellow model maker Camden Justice. Every member of the main cast was created from the ground up except for Edward, with some side characters also getting models made for them as well which ended up going unused in the pilot. The figures that appeared in the pilot, however, were made by Jacob. Jonathan Seville, who actually made the actual wooden figures that appeared in the show. He graciously allowed Jacob to preserve all that remained of the original figures and molds, many of which ended up appearing in the show's pilot and in Project Tiger Moth. The rest of the entire team working on the project consisted of a variety of model makers and filmmakers from the Thomas fanbase, and in October of 2022, Jacob and his crew began setting up equipment for Project Tiger Moth, with production efforts to get to this point having taken in two years. At this time, the upload deadline was less than two months away. The full crew only had six entire days together for filming, with everything in the episode except the large-scale figures being filmed all in a single week at Centenary United Methodist Church in Lawton, Oklahoma. They had from Monday until Saturday to shoot all the scenes with the model trains, with them having to schedule each set for each day and often having to build multiple sets a day. And if they missed their window and didn't get everything done, it would be over. On Sunday, the crew packed up and officially finished filming, as the show itself would put it, just in time. 
The episode premiered on November 26th, 2022 on YouTube, alongside a live premiere following the Greenberg train show in Edison, New Jersey, where the team displayed a Gage 1 replica of Ellsbridge Station with their models running on it. Following the release of the pilot, Jacob stated himself in an update video on the project that he would love to do more, and that there were scripts and ideas for future episodes. Missing Henry was one of these, but it was shelved in favor of other ideas. Jacob said in the update video that he did didn't know how exactly to continue forward with the project, and as such, the team expressed getting a rest after the fun but stressful two-year production. That is until Camden, who of course was the model maker for the project as I mentioned earlier, said some rather questionable things on his Twitter account. I'm of course not going to go into detail on what exactly was said, but after this incident, Jacob said that there is no PTM Project Tiger Moth Episode 2, and even if there was, Camden sure as won't be on it now. I don't have the energy to do this anymore. And with that, Project Tiger Moth was cancelled, leaving the script for the second episode free for fans to adapt. And in January of last year, Flying Pringle took his leave from Twitter. A pretty unfortunate end to such a wonderful project that had much bigger plans in the works. But hey, at least it happened at all. Now that we've finished talking about the production of Project Tiger Moth, let's go over what I think about it myself. So before I go over what I think of this project, let me quickly explain what the plot of this fan-made episode is. The plot of the good old days follows the events of the season 5 episode Oliver's Find, when Oliver found Toby's old shed and crashed into it while taking the mail train one night. Toby is sad that he doesn't have any work to do and tells Gordon about when he used to work on his old tramway. Toby wishes that he could have his old tramway again but Gordon isn't impressed with the idea, saying to Toby that all Sir Topham Hatt cares about is the main line. He leaves, and as soon as he does, Thomas arrives and notices Toby looking upset. He tells him that he can take his train to building supplies to help Percy with the main line extension. Toby takes the trucks away, but can't stop thinking about what Gordon said to him. Meanwhile, Percy is waiting impatiently for Thomas to arrive, but Toby arrives with the supplies instead. Toby asks Percy if there's anything else that he can do to help, and Percy tells him that he can take the trucks of tree branches back to the yards. Toby does so, but as he backs the train up a hill, the weight of the trucks becomes too much for him, and they push him down the hill, past Percy, and through the bushes at the work site, all the way to his old shed. Percy quickly arrives to find Toby marveling over the fact that he's on his old tramway, which he never thought he would ever see again. Thomas arrives with the workman and Sir Topham Hatt, who tells him that the new extension is a restoration of Toby's tramway, which is now being connected to the main line and Thomas's branch line. Toby is now happier than ever when the restoration is completed, because according to the episode, it seemed the good old days were here to stay. Now, let's go over what I think of this story. I think that it's a great follow-up to an already existing episode, and actually shows us how Toby got back onto his old tramway in the first place in Season 5 onwards. Because in Oliver's Find, they never directly say that the old station in Shed was the location on Toby's old line, and Toby just appears there out of nowhere starting with the episode Toby's Discovery. Like, where's his side of the story? Project Tiger Moth gives us that side of the story that we don't get to see in Season 5, and it's a really nice payoff to what Oliver's Find sets up. The cinematography in Project Tiger Moth is also really impressive, with some shots being based off of actual ones from Season 5. It really amazes me that Jacob and his team managed to recreate the Season 5 style so faithfully with their camera placement and accurate light my personal favorite shot is this one with the camera inside the branches as Toby pulls up to the buffers. It's a very pretty shot and it feels very Season 5. Speaking of camera placement, what's really interesting is that instead of using a camera attachment to get close-up tracking shots like in Season 5, the close-up tracking shots of Toby in this production were accomplished by placing the camera on top of a Gage 1 replica of the breakdown train's flatbed with Toby coupled to it and pushing it forwards. I definitely think that that was a really clever way of incorporating the tracking shots into the production, and they definitely helped the project recreate that Season 5 style brilliant. 
brilliantly. Speaking of recreating the Season 5 style, let's move on to talking about the models. These models, while they are made by a person who said some questionable things that I do not agree with in any way, are nice models. The faces are really accurate along with the models themselves, with the models having that really nice looking shine that they had in Season 5. And I love how this fan made episode gives Toby a completely new custom bracing face. Definitely a nice addition that they didn't need to go out of their way to add, but I love that it was added in anyways. The building models are also really nicely made too, and all the sets feel like they were taken straight out of the show, with my personal favorite sets being the new ones that they created, like the yard Toby was in at the beginning and the Y. They're really nice sets, and they feel that the crew did a great job at redressing them and making them look like they came right from the show itself. What's interesting though is that there were some models made for Project Tiger Moth that ended up going unused as I mentioned earlier, like these models of the narrow gauge engine Sir Handel and Peter Sam. It really goes to show how much potential the crew thought Project Tiger Moth would have, and I really wish we could have gotten to see these models in action somehow. I can only assume that these models were probably created for the cut ideas for the other episodes Jacob had in mind. Another thing that I like about Project Tiger Moth is the music, which was done by fellow Thomas fan Isaiah Ferguson, or otherwise known as One Tram Band. The music is very much in the style of Season 5, and definitely recreates its style wonderfully, but what's strange about it is that the music is very slightly pitched down a bit. The comments on the video featuring the production score uploaded to Isaiah's YouTube channel are disabled now, but I do think I remember seeing Isaiah respond to a person asking why the music was pitched down, saying that he did this because he thought it sounded better and to avoid copyright issues. Now, this is where I'm going to have to disagree. The music being pitched down very slightly just makes it sound really off. Now, about the avoiding copyright issue side of the argument. It kind of makes sense that you do that for the main theme since Project Tiger Moth's intro does sample the actual piano used in the Thomas intro, and I can understand that change, but the rest of the music didn't need to be pitched down at all, especially considering that the small little ditties present in Project Tiger Moth are all at normal pitch and the video didn't get claimed or taken down. This means that there was no reason to pitch the music down slightly at all. All. Now, if you're watching this and you do like the pitch down music, I'm not trying to crap on your opinion. I'm just saying that, in my personal opinion, it sounds weird hearing the music pitch down. And like I said earlier, it just sounds really off. Anyways, another thing that I really liked about Project Tiger Moth were the funny things in the background of shots. Like how, for example, there are seagulls present in almost every single set, which I can only assume must have been some sort of in-joke by the crew. Another funny detail is that when Sir Topham had arrives at the old station to talk to Toby, if you look closely in the background, a model of Squidward's house can be seen, which is jokingly swapped out with Toby as seen in this image of the crew together on the set. And finally, at the end, when Toby leaves the station, posters for the Beatles and Pink Floyd can be seen inside the station building as shown here. I definitely didn't notice any of these details when I watched the episode myself, but I do think that they must have been funny things for the crew to include on the set while filming. Before we move on to why I think Project Tiger Moth is the best fan production to come out of the Thomas fandom, let's talk about the plot of the cancelled second episode, Missing Henry. The plot of this episode would have involved a big ship named Manchak telling Henry a spooky story about an engine that disappeared. The engine was always on time, but one day when a big storm came in, the engine never arrived at the docks to drop off their goods train. The workmen went up the line to inspect, but when they got to the river, the tracks had disappeared, with the engine disappearing too, with only its trucks washing up against the riverbanks. Henry of course disbelieves in this silly ghost story, but as a heavy fog rolls over the island and Henry approaches a route alongside a river, the ground starts rumbling and a sinkhole opens up underneath Henry. Luckily, Henry and his crew manage to escape it and return to Brendam Dock safely with the Flying Kipper. James talks to Manchak about the incident and says that it was a shame that they couldn't find him. Henry interrupts James's conversation and then proceeds to tell both of them the story of what actually happened, with the last lines being ambiguous, saying, Surely he told them the truth. 
right? The script was pitched as a spiritual successor to stories like Haunted Henry, Something in the Air, and Duncan Gets Spooked. However, the script was canned since it felt a bit too similar to its predecessors. I do agree that it does feel very similar to Something in the Air in a sense, but other than that, this would have been a really nice story with lots of action, and it's a shame that it never came to be. I honestly would have loved to see how the crew would have tackled the sinkhole sequence. Some other interesting things to note about this episode according to Gage One Garage are that the concept of man shack was, what if the tug ship props were repurposed as a Thomas character, though any cargo ship prop was considered. However, full concepts of this were never visualized. The idea of the Bayou Railway was meant to be a homage to tugs as well, in the sense of the story taking place in the United States, with it being specifically based on the numerous steam engines that had sunken into swamps and rivers throughout Louisiana. The little Bayou engine mentioned in Manchac's story was planned to be a BR-80 with its side tanks cut off, cab opened, and hooked up to a BR-55 tender so that it would resemble an American switching engine, notably preserved Illinois Central Railroad 333. After filming, the body would have been scrapped and the chassis repurposed. The sequence of Henry's daring escape over the sinkhole in the story would have drawn some inspiration from Toby's tightrope, and the name of the planned episode was in reference to Henry going missing during the Boba era after being written off the main cast and being replaced with Rebecca. I definitely think that this info given to us about the episode shows and confirms that there were so many planned ideas for this project that sadly never came to be. And like I said before, it's a real shame that it never happened, because I would have loved to see this story and how they would have accomplished filming it. Now, that's all that I liked about Project Tiger Moth, so let's move on to what you've all been waiting for. <laughs> Why is Project Tiger Moth the best fan production to come out of the Thomas fandom? Well, as stated earlier, no fan-made product has ever been made on this scale since the actual model series ended 15 years ago. Jacob and his crew worked tirelessly to record everything here in time before the premiere in November. And by gosh, they did it and had the time of their lives doing so. The story is nicely written and well structured. The camera placement and lighting is very true to the original series. The models had the absolute blood, sweat, and tears poured into them to make them as accurate as possible. And the music is nice to listen to and really captures that classic Mike and Junior score. Project Tiger Moth captures all of the classic Thomas nostalgia and is a wonderful tribute to both one of the best seasons of the show and to the director who made it all possible. If anyone from the Project Tiger Tiger Moth crew happens to be watching this video? Anyone at all! I just want to say that you did an amazing job creating or helping to create this project so that it can be enjoyed by all of us here in the fandom. It definitely left its mark and made a big impact on lots of people, including myself. This project solidified that no matter how bad the show might get, there's always fans like these that understand the true vision of Thomas the Tank Engine. Before I end this segment, I want to talk about people noticing and giving Project Tiger Moth flack for not crediting Britt Allcroft who created the show in the intro, with the intro instead saying, adapted from the vision of David Mitten. Now, in my opinion, they didn't necessarily need to credit her in the actual video itself, as this this project was a tribute to a person who passed away and is no longer with us. Shunting Yard Studios put it best in this thread on Twitter, which I quote, Britt Allcroft is a wonderful woman, and for what it's worth, she and David Mitten were an incredible duo when they put their minds together. And that truly shows throughout seasons 1 through 5, but season 5 was really David's moment to shine and pull out the big guns. Season 1 through 4 portrays David and Britt's blend of ideas and visions the most in my eyes, but David had season 5 figured out more than she did, and she went along with it because it helped pitch the idea of how Thomas can be cinematic while wholesome. In terms of giving credit where credit's do, the people of Project Tiger Moth put Adapted from the vision of David Mitten because he was the one who helped Brit all the way with Thomas in its heyday. Wilbur Audrey wrote the original books, Brit created the show, Ringo and George are, and Baldwin and Angelus are well-known narrators, but the director for the television show based on Audrey's books created by Brit is honestly hardly acknowledged by non-Thomas fans. David Mitten was the guy. Thomas got its footing when it started because he worked hard too. Sure, he left for tugs, 
but he came back. Sure, Thomas and the Magic Railroad was made, but he stuck around for it. He loved Thomas like Brit. As a director, he deserves the credit. Britt Allcroft is still underrated as a person more than a producer, in my opinion. She had faith in Thomas since the beginning, always pushing it forward, stoking the fire. She knew that it could go really far since season one. If it wasn't for her, David would have never done Thomas. Project Tiger Moth specifically honors David because he was the backbone for keeping Thomas and his world grounded, and Britt had the charm of Thomas and the characters. He's not here to see what he inspired, but Brit is and has seen us, to which she is eternally grateful. She'd say the same thing, that his directing was a huge contribution to the Thomas that she knew and loved, much like ours. She may have done a whole movie about a magic railroad, but she would say that David was the real magic behind Thomas, through and through. Brit Allcroft put her heart and soul in Thomas the idea, but David Mitten was the one who made the vision into reality. He made filming Thomas into art for all of us. And I honestly couldn't agree more with what's said here. While Brit did help create the show and had a vision for how to bring these sentient talking trains to life on the screen, David was the one that really made it stand out from every other generic kid show out there with his direction. And I can definitely say that Thomas the Tank Engine and friends wouldn't have been the same without him at the wheel. Rest in peace, David. And with that, that's the end of my review on Project Tiger Moth. This is a really fun video for me to make, and I really hope that all of you watching enjoyed it as well. It was really interesting to change it up a bit and to cover something not official from the Thomas fandom, and maybe I'll make more videos like these covering other fan-made Thomas productions. There's a lot more of them out there that are really impressive to me and many other people, so who knows? Maybe I'll make more of these. You'll just have to wait and see. Thanks for watching, and make sure to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this one. This is the TSMU Fan, signing out. Special thanks to my Patreon supporters who have chosen to remain anonymous. If you'd like to learn how to get your name at the end of every new video that I upload, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Link is on my channel homepage under my channel description.